Welcome to another episode of Harley Street uh, Health. Today, I'm joined by a consultant ophthalmologist, Dr. Errol Chan, who works for the Singapore Medical Group. Welcome today. How are you? Good. Very well. Thank you. How are you, Mike? Yeah, very good. Thanks for joining us to talk about the eye. And I guess a lot of people maybe wonder what the relevance is of eye and kind of heart and cardiovascular disease. And they're very, very relevant. We're going to talk today a little bit about what the relationship is between the eye and the heart and heart disease and why we check the eye in heart patients and also what an eye examination involves. So why don't we start, Errol, by just going on, what, what is the linkage between the eye and cardiovascular disease? Uh, yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, so I think uh, the eye and uh, the, uh, the heart uh, or even the brain, um, and in fact, probably, you know, some parts of the rest of the body, uh, they do share uh, a common ground, which is uh, all of them contain blood vessels in them. So the blood vessels in the heart, in the brain, are similar to the blood vessels in the eye. So the major part where blood vessels are in the eye are in the retina. So um, that's where an eye specialist or an ophthalmologist would actually look uh, to uh, identify problems in the blood vessels. Um, the problems in the blood vessels are, uh, are a reflection of the problems in the heart as well as in the brain. Um, this is also because uh, the diseases that affect the blood vessels in the eye um, and the diseases that affect the heart and the brain uh, share the same risk factors. So things like uh, hypertension or high blood pressure, um, uh, cholesterol, diabetes. Uh, so these are common factors that affect blood vessels. If I send you a patient or a patient comes to you and they're worried about their eyes and, and their, their heart and how it's relationship with their heart problem. What do you do? What's the standard eye examination? So I think uh, the, an eye exam first involves uh, checking the patient's vision. Uh, we get them to read a number or letter chart uh, to assess where their level of vision is at. Uh, we check the pressures in the eye. Uh, we also uh, check the uh, front bit of the eye and uh, we do that uh, using a, a device just as this. Uh, the patient sits uh, at this device and uh, the eye specialist over on the other end looks into the eye. So it's kind of like a microscope, if you will, uh, that allows us to appreciate the fine structures in the eye. Um, the next thing that we do is that we put in eye drops into the eye to dilate uh, or open up the pupil. So um, the, 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 the difficulty with examining the back of the eye is that uh, the pupil is fairly small and does not allow us to get a good view of the back of the eye. And um, by putting drops and they dilate the pupils, it allows us to have a look at the back of the eye, the structures at the back of the eye more clearly. Hmm. And what are you looking for in these, in the structures in the back of the eye? What are the kind of, what are the signs of kind of vascular disease or problems in the back it's, of the eye? It's, it's kind of like the film in the camera. So if you imagine the eye as like a, uh, you know, a similar to a camera, the front part, the front bit of the eye, you know, parts of the lens, uh, they are part of the focusing mechanism of the, of the eye. And the back of the eye is kind of like the, the film in the camera. So, so um, the, the retina is responsible for, uh, you know, fine high definition kind of vision uh, that the eye receives. So in the retina, there are actually blood vessels. And um, the signs of uh, diseases at the back of the eye uh, for instance, uh, heart disease at the back of the eye, we're actually looking for the, the, the health of the vessel. So how narrow the vessels are, uh, how, how uh, twisted the vessels are. Uh, we are also looking for signs of cholesterol uh, deposits in the eye. So these cholesterol deposits may be uh, in the blood vessels. We're also looking for whether there's an, a suggestion of uh, insufficient blood supply to the back of the eye. And so we are looking for whitish areas and these are called cotton wool spots. Um, we are also looking for little tiny bleeding spots uh, in the retina. So all these uh, gives a suggestion of uh, whether there is a problem with the blood vessels inside the eye. Is the patient's eyesight at risk? I mean, so if you've got high blood pressure or diabetes or maybe not diabetes, mm -hmm. if you've got high blood pressure, high cholesterol, 
can the the can the eyesight be affected and can you end up end up blind? Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, that's that's quite a good question. Now, so suffice to say that uh, in the early phases of uh, hypertension, uh, diabetes, um, although there might be very early changes inside the eye in the retina, the vision is not usually affected, and therefore this sort of underscores the importance of you know having an eye exam. Uh, in a person who has not had their blood pressures checked or their cholesterols checked or um, in order because, you know, the early signs in the eye can be, a, can be an indicator of whether there's something else wrong in the rest of the body. Now, if there are more changes in the eye, then certainly the vision can be affected. So uh, in patients who have, you know, really very high blood pressures, the nerves can be swollen. Uh, there can be a lot more leakage of fluid inside the eye. Uh, in patients with very severe diabetes, um, there can be bleeding into the eye that impacts the vision. So um, some of these changes can certainly be corrected uh, you know, with treatment, um, but um, there is a point when the changes are so severe that uh, even with the best of treatment, uh, patients do not recover the same level of vision that they had uh, before they had the disease. What do you recommend in terms of eye screening? So, I mean, how often should somebody get screened? And if you have, let's say, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol, should, how often should you get screened? If you have diabetes, how often should you, you get screened? What are the kind of guidelines about eye screening? So I think it, in, um, I, the guidelines from the American Academy of uh, Ophthalmology, um, the main guideline really uh, uh, refers, uh, refers to people who are more than the age of 50. I think the recommendation is you have an, a baseline eye exam and depending on the findings of the eye exam, um, the doctor, the, the eye specialist would then decide on the frequency of, of eye examinations after. Now, so this is in, in a normal individual with no suggestion of any kind of uh, bodily disease. Now, mm -hmm. in patients with diabetes, certainly the, uh, the situation is slightly changed. Now, um, in patients with type 2 diabetes, so that's diabetes uh, and, uh, with onset in, 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 in the later years or in adulthood, um, the, these patients should have an, should have an uh, eye exam uh, or a photo done okay, at the point of diagnosis. Um, and it's very important to do that because, uh, the chain, because these patients might have been diabetic uh, for a couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, even prior to the diagnosis. And there are some insults or changes in the retina uh, early changes in the retina due to diabetes uh, that, um, that do not impact the vision. So the patient's really not aware of, of, of it. Um, in patients with type one diabetes, um, we recommend that they have their eye screenings five years after the onset. So uh, di diabetics usually do have a need a quite frequent, uh, you know, regular monitoring. Um, and certainly, you know, to answer your other questions on patients with hypertension and, uh, you know, cholesterol problems, uh, most of these would be people in their age, uh, you know, beyond the age of, uh, you know, 50. And therefore, you know, it certainly would make good sense for them to have an eye check uh, at some point. Right. Okay. So basically everyone should get an eye check. Above the age of 50, everyone should get an eye check once at least. And if they well, develop any risk factors, um, probably get an eye check. And then if you're, getting, if you're diabetic, you need regular so if you eye see Somebody's got some kind of changes in the back of the eye, they've got um, either diabetic eye disease or some kind of hypertensive uh, eye disease. What treatments do you offer? What can you do? So um, I think the treatment uh, in, uh, in, in 2021, modern treatment of, of diabetes in the eye uh, has changed quite dramatically over the last two decades. Uh, I think it's quite uh, an absolute to say that uh, uh, with the, you know, if patients are on monitoring and uh, they're on regular uh, and you know, monitoring and follow up. Um, there is no reason why anyone uh, would go blind from from diabetes. Now, so in terms of the in terms of the treatment um, for early di uh, early uh, diabetic uh, eye disease, uh, we usually just monitor them because some of these changes are actually uh, reversible. Uh, they actually do go away uh, with uh, better bodily control of the sugars. Um, now, in patients where uh, either their vision is affected by the diabetes uh, or uh, the changes are sufficiently severe, then these patients would certainly need some kind of treatment. And then the next question is what kind of treatment? So 
in general, if uh, there's you know if there is uh, if there is leakage of fluid inside the eye that's impacting the vision, that's something which we call uh, diabetic uh, macular edema. Uh, then uh, usually the first line treatment would be a couple of injections of, of a medication called anti VEGF. So uh, VEGF stands for vascular endothelial growth factor. Uh, the, the purpose of the medication is to reduce the leak of fluid at the back of the eye and sort of dry out uh, the retina. Um, and this, this treatment actually is quite good because uh, patients actually do improve vision uh, with uh, this treatment. Now in patients where there are a lot of bleeding spots inside the eye, so they're towards the severe end of the spectrum, a lot of bleeding spots in the retina, uh, then uh, the treatment would, it would usually be to stabilize the retina because if these bleeding spots are left unchecked, then they will eventually uh, develop bigger bleeds in the eye. So that is something that uh, we, do, we don't want. Um, and we do usually do a laser to sort of stabilize the whole retina. And usually that does work uh, quite well. Now, if there are big bleeds in the eye uh, or if there is scarring as a result of the bleeds, then uh, the treatment uh, is usually a surgery. Uh, and uh, the surgery is, is oftentimes uh, uh, quite effective uh, in if, 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 the, uh, if the scarring is not uh, too complex. Uh, usually the patients do recover uh, quite good vision. I think the whole point is that we want to treat it as early as possible and not wait till uh, you know, a lot of scarring has developed because uh, the success of any kind of treatment at that point would be certainly more tricky. Okay, so basically, yeah, that's kind of reiterates the importance of screening, isn't it? So you can catch disease early enough to treat it and prevent the kind of more severe damage. Now, something that um, I've heard about is this Google AI algorithm that can pre you predict heart disease just looking at pictures of the eye. What's the what's the story behind that? Yes, Mike. So um, there was a I think there was a large study that was uh, published. Uh, sometime in 2018, um, the they based the the the, res the researchers uh, basically looked at a whole lot of uh, images taken of the eye, and then they studied the pattern of uh, the blood vessels inside, uh, and um, based on their uh, they trained a a, a deep learning uh, artificial intelligence algorithm, uh, and then applied uh, whatever they had whatever this algorithm had learned on a new set of uh, images and assessed how effective it was in uh, you know, predicting the risk of a heart attack or a cardiac event uh, in five years. So I think uh, the data showed that it was 70% as effective as using traditional methods of, um, of, uh, of uh, cardiac risk assessment, which you probably can tell us more, a little more about. Um, so I think it's 70% more effective than the standard way of assessing cardiovascular risk. That's no, 70% as effective. As if, as if, okay. Yes, yes. So, yeah, so we are still keeping you in, in, in your job. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably coming near to the end of time, Errol. Any kind of final thoughts or, or summaries you want to, you want to give? Uh, no, I think uh, this has been uh, quite an interesting uh, uh, discussion. I think uh, between the, uh, the eye specialist and the cardiologist, uh, you know, we do share uh, quite a bit of interest in uh, some of these conditions affecting both the heart as well as the eye, uh, or in general, just uh, you know, blood vessel diseases. Um, so I think uh, you know, the awareness on, on, of you know, the patients uh, with any kind of uh, blood vessel disease or heart disease, uh, certainly you know, uh, do think about your vision. Um, and you know, especially if, if, if you're older than the age of 50, it's, it's a good idea to have an eye screen at some point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think that's the kind of key thing, isn't it? Everyone over the age of 50 should probably get some form of eye screening. And you know, I guess people, you know, you take your eyesight for granted, it's only when you start to have problems that um, you start to think maybe I should have prevented this in the past. And, and I guess a lot of this stuff is, you know, a lot of extent, you know, bad eye disease is preventable if people take the right care um, when they're when they're younger. Thanks for joining us today um, on this very helpful discussion. Um, I've learned a lot about the eye and its relationship to, to heart disease, and hopefully other people have too. 
All right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Okay.